one. Hello, you guys, and welcome to the woman's cage. <gasps> you have graciously it. bowed out and let me I'm have it. I'm not playing with the so I let her have it. I took it from her earlier, though, and it was funny. No, she she took part of it. She took K from me. No, I she didn't. got K back no, from me. It was more. It was so much more. She just doesn't want to be humble. Really? <laughs> You're gonna be like, it so was much more. If you can see her face so right now, she's more. like, it was so much more. It was so much so more. more. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being so big headed. Well, you know, it's the medication talking, so I can do what I want. I'm the narcissist. I'm just saying. If we I'm Jade, day, though. Oh yes, and I'm alone. High five. Yeah, yeah, we can't. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. too far. Okay. Yeah. Jade is off camera, just in case I hadn't said that like three times before. Oh, no, not me. You said that. Yes, that's what he said. So in case you think I'm just talking to myself, this is not real. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm talking to Jade over there. Your character is in your book, too, now. Really? Really? Who really knows? Oh, my word. Well, you should grab your water out of your flask. <laughs> so um, during my last interview, oh, I reached for my flask because I needed some uh, liquid wisdom. Uh, and what is it? And it turns out that Jade replaced this with water. So I was no liquid in there, but refreshed, water. but not wise. This was not wise water. I'm it upset. Really okay. Fun. Anyway, we should talk about real things. Okay, yeah, I'll have books. Because we have books. Yes, we do. So, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. And I thought I could juggle it all. We really can't, but we try anyway. And <laughs> I thought I did my journey alone. And I thought I had it all figured out. And no, Hollywood, she does not need to be more famous. I need to be more famous. Mm -hmm. I have a docu-series, but I need a TV show. Okay, so it's a script. Yeah, what? it's a script. Episode one. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. And I thought he was the one, didn't we all? And the misfit guys, a sassy suede that leaves crooked footprint. That's our new series, you guys. And there will be another one coming out in July. We just figured out the cover. And the title, but apparently I'm not sharing the title. It's a mystery, guys. And there's another book, and it's the And I Thought Workbook. I'm too lazy to ask someone to go get it. Yeah, no, no one's getting no, it. Okay, no. so no, they just all standing still. That's cool. Oh, yes, and the 25 hottest indie authors, advocates, and artists. Right. Our magazine. Yes, our magazine. By the way, he's adorable. That's Dr. Noah Charney. He was nominated for a Pulitzer. I gotta stop saying things about him. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Okay, so I'll, you can find all of that out on andwethought.com, or you can check out our books on amazon.com and bondsandnobles.com. And please, you guys, check out our docuseries, Just Writing Life, on Channel 18 in Sacramento, or on Amazon. Amazon. But you guys aren't here to hear about us. You're here to hear about our wonderful guests. So, wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi. First of all, you guys are great. I love you. You're just so thank you. Great energy. I love it. Uh, so I'm Jessica Anya Blau, and I'm a writer. And I'm in my apartment in New York. I only have one of my books here. So this is one of my books, The Summer of Naked Swim Party, which is uh, about. It's fiction, but it's sort of based on growing up in Southern California and Santa Barbara with parents who were growing pot and swimming naked a lot. Uh, no, it's warm. I, I completely understand. And your other books? What's that? Uh, my other books, this is, the one on the top is Drinking Closer to Home, and that's sort of a memoir that I fictionalized, so that gets into, you know, all the other stuff, rehab, divorce, addiction, affairs, all that stuff. And that's uh, The Wonder Bread Summer, which is based on when I was in, a student at, at Berkeley and I needed a job, I had no money and I was really poor and I needed a job and I met a guy in a bar who offered me a job. And I think the lesson is don't ever take a job from a guy you meet in a bar. And so I was working at this clothing store and it ended up being this major cocaine distributor. So I found myself accidentally working for a cocaine distributor. And so that book was sort of, I launched that book from that, but it's it's fiction. And this is my latest book, The Trouble with Lexi, which takes place at a private boarding school back east. And I think those are the four books. I also ghost write books, but those are the four under my name. Exactly. Let me make sure I get this right. That's because awesome. Like when I looked you Wonder out. Bread. Wonder Bread. I love Wonder Bread. Oh, did you read Wonder Bread? No. Are you Wonder Bread? Actual Bread. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. She's over here thinking Wonder Bread with jam sounds awesome. But no, uh, Wonder Bread is great. I love Wonder Bread too. It's in my reading queue. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it's okay. It's I'm sorry. I know. Like I've been told by many you professional. You just did this again. We we're supposed to be professional today. No, it's good. Look, look at all. Look at what you guys are producing. It's better to produce your own work and put all your energy into yourself. Like, forget it. You know, you, you have to write. You got to make your movies. You got to do your thing. No, but we absolutely do read. We do. Well, of course, you read because I don't. I've never met a writer who doesn't read. So I know you <laughs> read. Jade reads almost ten books a week. But anyway, let's get off of us. I want to talk more about you. And I'm, if I do this wrong, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> really badly apologize but I remember when I did my research on you I you were a YA writer correct well Naked the Trouble Swimmer. with Lexi is a YA book no Naked ah! <laughs> well Naked Swim, Parties, Naked Swim Parties they released so they did they released it, you know, it was like on the Today Show pick and all these things and then they sort of did a relaunch as a YA it kind of crossed over Okay. Yeah, so it sort of crossed over, but it was it was originally released as a. And then, I was reading, and I wrote down Y A. That's the biggest thing, and I was like, oh, I want to inter I want to interview her, and then I saw the naked swim price, and I was like, yeah, I know that's not what it's about, but my goodness, I've got to don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. <laughs> so we know that you write from your life. Yeah. So do you find it that you do you find yourself pressured to go out and live more life to have more things to write about no not at all I mean I just think life is weird enough right I mean life is strange enough every single day no not at all I mean I think if you live if you make it to age 15 you have 20 novels in you you know so, <laughs> and you know like every year is just being alive it's it's I mean, it's sort of like, you know, I mean, like a lot of this is based on my family, like naked swim parties. I was it started when I was remembering being a kid in a swimsuit and watching my parents and all their friends naked swimming in the pool and watching one of my parents' friends, a man jumping naked on a diving board. And I'm watching him thinking, what is that? Like, it was just so freaky. And so that whole book started from that memory. So I think as long as you're part of the world, which you two obviously are, and you're writing and you're and you're witnessing the world around you, there's plenty of material. And, you know, in Wonder Bread Summer, uh, you know, she loves Wonder Bread. You know, it was just, it was really just kind of remembering when I was in school in, in, at Berkeley in California and just all these strange things that happened because of that place and the time and just all the things that were happening. So it's just, no, I think the world is full of plenty of stuff. I mean, I... I do make things up like it is fiction, but it's just it's usually launched. It's la usually launched from something that'll happen to me or something I observe. And then I'll just run with it. Exactly. I, I so understand that. Like before I used to write straight from imagination and now I write from life and imagination. <laughs> Some of those stories you'd be like, really, that happened? I'd be like, no. Stranger than fiction. It was what happened was stranger than that, but I had to make it palatable. <laughs> True. I mean, it is true. You do have to tone stuff down. I mean, all these ones that are based on life, it's like you totally have to tone stuff down because it becomes unbelievable at a certain point. I mean, the Berkeley mm -hmm. one, Wonder Bread Summer, there was so much weird stuff that happened in Berkeley, you know, that I just had to, I mean, I threw it in, but I did have to change a lot of it. It was, you know, yeah. And the, the you know, it was, it was nutty. And um, so, Number one, I'd like to make an observation since I am a writer and apparently we observe. Mm -hmm. um, I feel really dumb today because you went to Berkeley and <laughs> wow, <laughs> and that's a great college for the art, for literature. Oh wow! Um, and then number two, uh, you were from Santa Barbara and now you're in New York. How badly do you miss the West Coast? I, you know, Santa Barbara's nice. It's a beautiful place, but I do I miss the West Coast in the winter. I also live in Baltimore. Yay, Baltimore! Um, so I miss the West Coast in the winter when it's snowing. I just, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with the cold. I hate the cold. The thing I hate about it most is the clothing. Like I hate the jackets and the layers and I hate the shoes you have to wear. This is just, you know, I, it's just like, 
the shoes you have to wear when it snows, it's like it ruins mm -hmm. everything. Like how can you possibly, I don't know how you go out to dinner when you have to wear those kind of hideous shoes. So, you know, growing up in California, you just, you wear, I love shoes and you wear nice shoes and you wear scrappy sandals and you wear high heels, you wear them all year. But so I do miss it, but I do love the East Coast too. And you know what I love about the East Coast? Cause what you never have in California, in California, you don't have warm nights. It's like the ocean fog comes in and the nights are always cool. Even in the summer, you need a sweater at night. And in the East Coast, as you know, it's like those warm nights are, I love them, incredible. They're beautiful. I have to admit, like I, I, I've not, I haven't done the Santa Monica thing. I'm a Santa Barbara thing. I did Santa Monica, LA, Sacramento, Napa, and I just love California so far. Yeah, it's nice. It's I mean, so nice. Oh, well, I'm Northern Cal. It's kind of cold. Yeah. Oh, little, yeah. So I'm not that fun, but yeah, Southern California I like. Okay, I'm finished now talking yeah. about California. And no, it's not. Jade absolutely hates like LA. I hate the traffic in LA. Oh, hey, that was the traffic. Yeah, it. traffic is a bummer. Yeah, traffic is a bummer. But, you know, if you can enter a daydream, which is what I do when I'm in L.A., I, like, deliberately choose what I'm going to think about or daydream, and then you just enter that zone and sort of detach from your body, and you know? And so, and then you kind of make it useful daydreaming time. I think someone can make great money having mobile porta potties yeah because that's always my problem so it's like oh you get on there and then it's like i deliberately did not drink water but i still have to go i know so I, I have a mobile porta potty just yeah, drive yeah, around I mean, and right i mean how many times have you pulled over or gotten out of the car and just peed on the side of the road i mean i it's like yes it's happened i mean i i peed in a venti starbucks cup once when, but that was in when i was at, stuck at the lincoln tunnel you know when you're oh like, my oh. Yeah, and it was like, and it was freezing cold. It was the middle of winter, and it was like a two-hour delay at the Lincoln Tunnel. And I just thought, I opened the window, I poured out the, the Starbucks had been bought, whatever, at the last rest stop. Poured it out, and I peed in that Starbucks cup. And it was like, th there's no choice here because I'm not, I'm not getting out at the Lincoln Tunnel in the middle of traffic in the snow. And you know. <laughs> Title for a new book, y'all. So yes. me and us and Jessica, which you really can't even say that we're going to do because Jessica's awesome and she writes wonderfully. Um, <laughs> writing something called Traffic and Peace Stories, <laughs> like an anthology. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good anthology. You should do it. No, and then it was like you know. Then I opened the then I opened the door. And so I have the hot venti Starbucks pee. I opened the window and then I was totally fascinated by the steam and the pee freezing immediately on the side of the road as I poured it out. I was just like, wow, that's frozen pee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you said it, that's what I thought about it. I was like, I wonder how quickly it froze. <laughs> it froze immediately. It was one of those terrible, terrible, like, zero, oh. you know, and I'm like, open the car door and all that cold air is rushing in. I'm like, watching it just like, freeze on the on okay we have to get back off the subject because i'm sure like your publicist will probably never let you come back here again <laughs> <laughs> Ever. it was like no you were supposed to talk about books and now you're talking about p really yeah. my publicist wrote a really good ya book actually that i have here okay so, cool thinking about why but my publicist wrote this ya book it was, it's really good it's really to, but, oh. yeah so if you're interested in ya you should have my publicist on and so what, what was the title of the YA? Well, it's called, We Now Return to Regular Life. This is a Okay. That sounds great. We'll have your publicist on. And she's done a plug for her publicist. Yes. We're about it. Now, I'm sorry. Does that go the opposite way? If you do a plug for your publicist, you get one up when you don't have to pay for it? <laughs> what? The publisher pays for it. Yeah, it's a guy. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Cool. Yeah. All right. We need to ask something serious. So, yeah. Jade, ask something serious. <laughs> She's on coding. I don't know what's going on. I, <laughs> I really am because bronchitis is a thing. Um, wow. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> so, you said that you originally that the second book, no, was it the swimming? Yeah. Closer to it eventually got, yeah, there you go. So eventually, like, it was picked as, like, the Times thing for something to read, and it got relabeled kind of sort of as a YA. No, that was the wonder, that was Naked Swim Party. Yeah. Naked Swim Party, right. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Because I'm sure you, when you put it out there, you weren't thinking, young people. 
No, yeah, that's fine. I mean, a reader is a reader. I don't care how old they are. I'm not ageist. I like young people. I like old people. I like people. I mean, you know, people are good. People are good people. I don't care. I mean, any reader is great. You know, so no, I that was fine. Jade has an actual oh. question. With that relabeling, did you find that you had to rebrand yourself, or in any? Yeah. I didn't even feel anything about it. It was just that they sort of promoted it in different places or something. I didn't even, you know, it's just me. Like I can't, I, I just can't, I can't be anything other than myself or I don't want to. It's like, I'm going to die and I'm not going to waste my time not being, pretending to be something other than I am. So. That's perfect. I mean, I have to admit, I, I love an artist that's flexible. And yeah. just kind of knows, like, I wrote something good and as long as there's an audience, because I meet a, some authors. Now, like, this is my niche and I'm going to stay in my niche. And, and, this, this, is, is my and this is what I wrote. And if it doesn't fit the person that I wanted, the messages to match the person I want it to go to, it's like, well, I'm going to ignore that. Please pull it from the market. <laughs> you know, sort of, yeah. I'm like, what? But, I don't, but, but the, it, that doesn't even make sense to me. I mean, the, the process, you know, as you all, you write books, so you know what I'm talking about. I mean, the process, your day-to-day -day life is, is working and writing. And the idea of having a reader is, is almost, it's, it's more conceptual. Like you don't, you know, you rarely see people. I mean, a couple of times I have been somewhere and seen somebody read my book and I'm just like, I want to scream. I'm so excited. But it's not, you don't get to really witness anybody responding to it. So just the idea that anybody's responding to it or reading it, it's great. I don't, you know, I mean, there's like, ego thing like you know we, we were talking I guess off camera before about your beautiful teeth and me feeling like my teeth look terrible so there is there is ego involved in life but I think when you have ego in your art I think it ruins it and so you kind of have to you know so for me it's always a battle to eliminate ego when I'm writing it's like as soon as you ask yourself what does this reveal about me you're too late. the art has to exist outside of your ego because once you insert your ego you're creating something sort of false so and that also goes for the readers it's like it's not up to me who it. i mean i would love to have the greatest number of readers possible but to hand pick who they are it's like anybody who wants to read a book as far as i'm concerned anybody who wants to read my book is is a great person and i love them for reading it so i don't care how so, so I, I want to read your books and i so i love for reading you as well Wait, the one I even correct you. No, and you don't I even have, have and you don't even have coding to. Vote. I know, I don't. I, <laughs> well, it's, it's, I'm refreshed. <laughs> you only have water in there, is right? It's exactly. Uh, okay, that was the so, best joke ever. I, I have one more question, and um, apparently I'm three minutes over, but you know, whatever. One more question is, what is your writing process? So. Well, I, I have kids, so I've always had kids since I've been writing. So my writing process is I write whenever I can. So I can't, I can't make conditions to write because that's impossible. I mean, I feel like if you decide you're like, I have to be in an empty room with 10 Hershey Kisses and a cup of tea. Like as soon as you box yourself into something that you have, conditions that you have to have, I feel like you it's impossible to get anything done because life is chaos and we can't control anything and so there will always be interruptions and impingements on our time so i just write whenever i can so if i have a yoga class in the morning i write in the afternoon if i have to teach i write you know i just you know when i go get a pedicure i like getting pedicures uh every time i go get a pedicure i bring the computer because that's like the long you're sitting 45 minutes in a chair you know one of those massage chairs that i love and so that's like really good writing time so i write you know, I write whenever I can. Today, I never thought of that. I'm ready to I write. How do you start a book? Because I know when they say the hardest thing is to look at an empty page, and I know there's a book too. <laughs> yeah, starting is hard. For, uh, I think the only way for me to start is to expect to do in the beginning. Can I? Can I use a, a swear word? Go for it. It's only one, so hey. Okay, so I, the way I start anything is I accept that it's going to be total shit. So I just create something. I know it's just going to be a pile of junk and I, so in accepting that I'm able to start, but I really have to say that to myself, like, okay, you're going to write something. It's going to be terrible, but just write it so that you have something to rewrite. 
And so that's, that's the only way to get myself started. Otherwise, because if I'm aiming, as soon as I start aiming and reaching for something, I, it, I mean, that's my ego. Like, oh, I want to write the most brilliant book ever. And then it's like, ah, hey, you're an idiot, Jessica. Just write the worst book ever and then try and make it better. So the only way for me to start is to accept my ridiculousness. Like, it's not any old piece of junk. And then, I, and then revise, 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 revise. Oh, I hate that part. I literally hire people for that part. They <laughs> believe <laughs> she makes me read it, and then I revise it for her. Yeah. Right. Right. You have two parts of the same system. You can both revise it. So I have to be both parts at once. I'm sorry. Oh, mm-hmm. Jay, you have that last yeah, final. My famous, final question. Where can people find you online or anywhere? Any events coming up? Yeah, that's a nice question. You guys are so good covering everything. So they can find me at www.jessicaanyablau.com and then same with at Twitter, at Jessica Anya. You know, it's all my name, Jessica Anya, N-Y-A, Blau, but it's all two A's in a row. So all those things, Twitter, Instagram. I'm into Instagram, these faces. I haven't been going on Facebook lately. I just can't, I don't know. I can't bring myself to do it. But I like, I like looking at people's pictures. I think it's interesting. I haven't been on Instagram in a minute. Like I'm like all of a sudden I'm like a Facebook person. Okay, really? but I'm we sorry. Are we up. are wrapping up, and I'm just having a conversation. Pour <laughs> me a glass of wine. Someone give me some it's wine. Too early for wine. Wait, oh, get, get the cake. Bring back the cake. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bring on the cake. I'm, I'm lovely looking at it. I'm like, I want the cake. <laughs> okay, we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Go, Jade. Go. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us. Um, and you can find out everything that your ladies are doing on andwethought.com. And w- remember that wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Winona, who's going to get a pedicure now. Oh, good. Well, she's a manicure. Anyway, and Jay, <laughs> with the beautiful nails that you can't see because she's off camera. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much.